The 2004 tsunami was the single most impactful event I had witnessed in my life, and something deep inside of me wanted to make even just a small impact in return. Thailand, as opposed to Banda Che or Sri Lanka, was a random decision, but it was one that would alter my life in many ways. This first shot was actually taken in Bangkok, just a couple days after I landed. It was an off-the-hip shot, a bit of motion blur. She's an apparition, a ghostly reminder of the people that lost their lives. When the tsunami hit on December 26, 2004, the grandson to Thailand's late King Rama the Nine was on vacation and soaking up the sun in the Kaolak area of Thailand. This patrol boat was deployed with him as a protection detail. Unfortunately, that fateful morning, there was no protection for what was to happen, and the young prince fell victim to the tsunami, along with 8,000 other people. The waves were so powerful that it pulled this patrol boat a full two miles from its anchored spot just off the beach. I returned in 2014, and it still stands there as a monument to what happened that day. I arrived in Phuket in late February 2005 and by that time a fair amount of the disaster response efforts had taken place. Bodies had been recovered, and the Starbucks on Patong Beach had removed the Toyota truck from its lobby and was selling caramel macchiatos again. But as I explored the island on my 125 Honda scooter, I found this forgotten beach named Kamala that wasn't very touristy, and didn't have the same kind of money flowing into it that Patong did. So as I came upon this hotel, I realized that some places would take much, much longer to recover. In that same town of Kamala, I happened upon the Wat, or temple, and got to see firsthand the destructive forces of what the tsunami could do. Being directly across the street from the sea, and without a barrier, the temple took the full brunt of the waves. The structures in Thailand are typically column and unreinforced brick, so the impact of the ocean met very little resistance as it ripped through the temple. At Wat Kamala, I met a young monk named Tukta, who wanted to show me around and what happened to the temple. He didn't speak English, and I only spoke two words of Thai at the time, so he just guided me around while gesturing. Here, he's showing me the wall that was blown out by the wave. The wood is just a temporary measure to keep the structure up. After Tukta walked me around the temple, he stopped in front of the main Buddha shrine, and pointed out the water level from the tsunami had actually reached the nose of the big Buddha behind him. I thanked him and took his photo. I was so moved by him and the people of Kamala, I donated the thousand baht I had with me to help rebuild the temple. And I would return a few more times to speak with Tukta until one trip when I found he had been reassigned to a different temple. I was trying to get to Kaolak, where the tsunami hit the hardest and where I would be living for the next year. As luck would have it, a family I made friends with in Phuket had plans to go to a Chinese graveyard near Koh Khloi to pay respects to their ancestors, and they offered to drive me. They also invited me to the graveyard, which turned into a full family event with over 25 people arriving. So I started documenting the occasion, and I grabbed this portrait of one of the uncles who owned the land we were on, standing proudly next to his truck. For one of my visa runs, I decided to ride to Malaysia through the south of Thailand on my 125 Honda. This trip would end up being one of the most fulfilling times of my life. The further south I went, the more Muslim influence became apparent. The architecture, the food, the language. I met these boys here who spoke not just Thai, but also Arabic, Malay, French, and some English. We talked briefly, and then the evening of dawn sounded. They had to go to pray and I had to go on to the next town before dark. While living in Kaolak, I would try to get down to Phuket once a month or so to see a friend and just relax. On one of my trips down, I read about a swimming hole nearby that was certain to provide that needed relaxation. It was after seeing these kids having fun in that swimming hole, and just being kids, that I knew things were turning around. The weight of the tsunami and 8,000 lost lives was starting to lift, and the normal Sanuk way of life was starting to return. At that same swimming hole, this dad stole my heart with the pure love being expressed between him and his son. Many people lost loved ones in that tsunami, 
In the village I worked in alone, I heard horrible stories of loss. But when I look at this photo, I'm reminded of the love and the joy that ran deep with the Thai people in the face of all of that. 